farming has been there since time immemorial. I remember when we were growing up, my mother could pick the best cobs and say, these are for seeds. She would store them nicely in the kitchen, sometimes hanging in, in the kitchen. Those are the seeds we could plant the following season. We could plant without fertilizer. I remember the early days when I was introduced to serious farming in Petauke, in my father's village, Chitindi village, Chief Sandway. We could farm without any chemical fertilizer. Okay, we could put this, the, 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 our harvest in the granary till the following year without putting any chemicals. But now everything has changed. Now we buy seed, we buy fertilizer, we do modern methods of farming. Hi, I'm the mad farmer from deep down the village of Chipangali district in Eastern province, deep down in the village. I say, welcome to my videos. Okay, like I always say, I'm not a professional man, but I try as much as I can sharing my experience because I have a passion for farming, both crop and animal. Today, I thought of sharing something a little bit different about land preparations. This is the best time to do your land preparation. A good farmer always plans ahead. This is the best time to do the land preparations. For example, this is not my land. I just rented it. I don't have my own land. The only piece of land I have is where I built my house. Otherwise, I just rent. Every year I rent. Um, so far, I think I've rented about uh, four hectares. Okay, which is uh, per acre is something like 300. That's how much I pay. 300 per acre, uh, which gives me 600 per hectare. Okay, I just rent. What I'm trying to say is here, what's going to happen is I'm going to plant my onion this side and then I'll plant my ground nuts this side. My soybeans will be far end there. Then I'll maize. I've got another piece where I'll plant maize and then some other things. I'm trying to, to try something else new. So this is how I break it down. So the first very important thing is to prepare land. So in the next few days, I'll actually start actually plowing this place. Okay, so what we're doing, the guys are actually bringing the manure, which we are going to put in the in these spaces. Okay, and then after that, we are going to plow this place, and so that we can prepare it for what? for for the for the planting. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk specifically on two crops here. That will be onion and soybeans. Okay, come uh, for a start. Let's start with the onion. So the way we are going to do our raised beds are like this. Okay, you can come closer here. So, what we are going to do, if you can see these ridges, these three, we are going to break them and make one bed. Okay, and then this space you see here will actually remain here. Okay, show them, please. You can show them. This space here will remain, and then we are going to get these two, make one bed. That space will remain there. Then those three will actually be uh, the beds. The idea is to raise the beds and then to increase the, the, the plant population of onions. Onion is about plant populations. From my own calculations, uh, supposed to be between 75 and 85, medium bulbs should give you a 10 kg. So you will be able to tell how many kgs you will be able to harvest. But a lot of people have asked me, how, what's the tonnage like in one hectare? I wouldn't tell you. The best you can do is do your mathematics. Do your mathematics. 85, 75 to 85 bulbs will give you 10 kg and then multiply them with plant population. What you do is, the way we do our onion here is different from where I've read on most of those websites. I've read on the website of Star Ayas, I've read on the website of Zamseed, I've, uh, I've read on the website of K2, all these guys have read them. Okay, they've actually talked about the fertilizers, like the veggie mix, the veg 24 and stuff like that. I've read all that. But the way we do here is very, very cheaper. We do it the cheaper way. We only apply fertilizer once in the nursery. And then we apply, when we actually replant the seeds in the field, we only apply once. And that's D. That's uh, the way we do these things. I'm not saying that's the way you should do, but that's the way we do these things. And then you find that our bulbs will be big enough. Okay. What it is, is you wait, okay, once the, you are sure that the rains have started, you do the base like I've told you, okay, and then after that now, you plant. What you are going to do is our manure will be down there, and then uh, we'll put soil on top, and then we'll plant, okay. Then after about two to three weeks, we are going to apply, we are going to apply D, we just broadcast, 
D. 60 to 80 grams per square meter, meaning that your handful should actually fit per square meter. Okay, the most secret thing about onion is onion and the weeds, they don't mix, please. The number one enemy for onion are weeds. If you want to have a good harvest, make sure that your onion is ever clean. Then you come back and thank me. That's how onion is done. After that now, continue cleaning your field. Continue cleaning the field. Basically, j j just pulling the weeds out are better than putting a hole in there. Okay, and any other weed killers. I'm not sure if there's another weed killer because we believe in just pulling them out. Okay, then after that now, when it's about harvest, that's why the best time to plant uh, onion is actually, to replant onion is actually uh, from the first week to the third week of December so that you can harvest in April, May when the rainfall are a bit low because we've got no control over the rains because if there are those which are irrigated, what they do is towards harvest they reduce on the irrigations in the watering. Okay, so since we've got no control over the rains, we plant around that time so that by the time it's April, May, uh, the, the rainfall would have been reduced. And then that's when you check that, no, this thing, when it's at maturity, it will actually fall down. Okay, that stem will actually fall down. That's when you start you start harvesting. You dig them and then you put them in the shed. It's up to you whether you want to cut the top or you leave them like that. That's up to you. Now, let's come back to soya. Soya beans, the way I do it, what I do is, I prepare land using uh, using the kettle. I use the, the ridges. There are two types of farming. Like last year, I did the reaping. Reaping is a system whereby you draw a line in the ground. You don't disturb nature. You just draw a line. And then you put your seed there. Okay. You put your seed there. And then you cover them a little bit. Because if there's a lazy crop, soybeans is one of them. Because the moment you put a heavy, a heavy thing on top of the seed, it will not put through. It will germinate, but it will not come out because it's very weak. Okay, so that's why most of the time when you do that, we put some fine soil on top so that it's easier for it to, to come out. Okay, another method is you use the ridges. Okay, the ridges are okay, but plant population goes down. So any of the two methods, it's up to you. With soybeans, it's not necessary to put um, fertilizer. Okay, because on its own, it has got nitrogen. Okay, I know there are a lot of books about soybeans, but what I teach about is something practical, something which we do, and then we've seen the benefit of doing it. I know most of you guys have gone to school to go and study. Okay, I, I respect that, and then I appreciate that. Okay, we can't take that thing away from you. But what we do, us, we are on the practical side because we are on the ground. Okay, trying to see how things are done. I know a lot of people have read books, 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 but sometimes the theory only without practical is a problem. Because you can tell something, you can tell someone things you've never done. Okay, it's fine. But with us, we actually tell you the practical part of it because we are actually on the ground. So this is about uh, soybeans. Okay, with soybeans, the first thing you need to do is prepare the land, do the ridges like I told you, buy inoculum. Inoculum is very, very good for soybeans. You get inoculum, you get sugar, you mix inoculum and, you know, you mix sugar with the, with the soybeans and then you add inoculum. Inoculum, sugar is just a sticker anyway. You put there and then whatever you mix with the inoculum that day should be planted. You see how it's going to come out and then you are going to come with we are going to come out with a good harvest. I'm just trying to be very, very, very brief because of the limited space of the space in my phone. So that's the way you do about it. I will give you later on, I'll give you a detailed uh, about soya, separate soybeans and, uh, and onion. Today, I just want to hint on the, let me say, on, I just want to hint everywhere so that you guys can actually share this experience. And then uh, I've received a lot of calls, a lot of calls, a lot of text messages, but be, be assured that I read all the messages you send. I read all the messages, all the text messages, I'm ready to attend to you. And then there's another thing, a lot of people out there have got land, which is just lying idle. You don't do anything. I remember somebody, last week somebody from Katete came to pick me up from home. Mad farmer, see my land. What can I do here? I went there, I advised them. Because you find that somebody has got land. Some of us don't have land, but you guys have land. Why don't you make good use of it? Okay, for example, get somebody to be there at the farm. Like here, you can get a couple. It's very, very affordable. Some of these couple, we pay them per year. Get a couple, put them on the farm. Let them grow crops. From the same crop, you pay them. Okay. So that you can get, you can even get things which are cheap to maintain. For example, 
chickens, like the black antelopes, the croilers, the brahamas, they, those things, they'll just give you pressure the first three weeks. The rest, they'll just be scavenging on their own. They'll be giving you eggs, you'll be selling, they'll be giving you meat and stuff like that. Make good use of that land you have. If you've got any information or you've got any question about these things, please feel free to get in touch with me. I'm always free to come and visit you and thanks so much for everyone who's been inviting me. In the last few weeks, I've been moving up and down trying to visit a few, few farmers here and there. It's very, very important to actually mingle, to network, to see what, how others are doing. Okay, the members say, Umana Shenda, Atasha Nyinukwipika. Because you'll be thinking you're the best. So it's always better to visit. Please feel free to get in touch with me. My numbers are always the same. 0977 0977 I am the Mad Farmer. Please share this video. Go to my YouTube channel, Mad Farmer Kapata. Mad Farmer Kapata. Please uh, like the video, uh, subscribe, and share it. Let's see how best we can help each other. Be a farmer, uh, be a millionaire. Remember, farming is a business. From me, each Pangai district, deep down in the bush of Eastern Province, in the middle of nowhere, I am. You mad farmer, I love you.